Ladies and gentlemen, we finally have some news about OpenAI and Sam Altman's secretive AI, the one that just a few months ago we were all calling QSAR. According to Reuters, the codename of this type of AI model is Strawberry, and I believe it primarily focuses on enhancing the reasoning abilities of AI. So pretty cool stuff. Now, as you might know, folks, Reuters is known for its reliable reporting, especially when it comes to tech giants like OpenAI. So we can usually take their word for it when they dish out new info. But here's where things get a little crazy. I found this article, and there's also talk about other demos at OpenAI, suggesting reasoning improvements in GPT-4, similar to human thinking. Basically, just a few days ago, Bloomberg reported that OpenAI's recent demos with GPT-4 showcased that it apparently reached human-like reasoning. <laughs> Scary stuff, right? Now, why mention this? There's a lot of talk about Project Strawberry, and some think it could be the project that's been attracting attention. However, according to Reuters, it's still unclear whether the showcase project was actually Strawberry or something entirely different. So I guess this suggests that OpenAI might be working on another model, perhaps a more expensive one that's designed specifically for enhancing reasoning capabilities beyond what's seen in Project Strawberry. I mean, a potentially broader application of their GPT-4 model with a specialized agentic framework, perhaps. I say this because this kind of setup is a strategy that's been tried with other advanced models, since it aims to boost reasoning to more closely mimic human thought processes. But GPT-4 closer to human-like reasoning? I mean, I, I don't know about that. Anyway, folks, I think you should know, I don't think we're talking about GPT-5 here. Yes, while it's easy to get excited and start speculating about GPT-5, the current discussions around Project Strawberry and its GPT-4 enhancements are about advancing reasoning within the limits of existing technologies, not about introducing a new model. Going deeper into the inner works of OpenAI, it seems they are intensely focused on refining these models' reasoning abilities, enhancing how they analyze, break down, and understand complex problems, significantly outpacing previous capabilities. And I think the core ambition of Project Strawberry is to create new research methodologies. You see, according to a recent internal document from OpenAI, which Reuters had a glimpse of in May, the project remains somewhat mysterious, with exact details and timelines still under wraps. But the document outlines OpenAI's plans to employ Strawberry for groundbreaking research, though the specifics of this research are not fully disclosed. Interestingly, folks, Strawberry seems to be a well-kept secret even inside OpenAI. The document indicates that Strawberry aims to enable AI to do more than just answer questions. It's designed to proactively engage in deep research, which involves independently browsing the internet and performing complex research tasks. Essentially, Strawberry could mark a step toward truly autonomous AI researchers who can conduct their own investigations without human help. That's one hell of a step. What do you think about that, folks? Anyway, if you remember, a few days ago we talked about new details about GPT-5 and the five levels of AI, AGI that OpenAI has drawn up, with the second level focusing on reasoners, which will probably include GPT-5, and the third on AI agents. Now, while the specifics of Project Strawberry remain somewhat elusive, I guess the details we've gathered allow us to piece together a pretty solid understanding of its potential direction. From the document in question, it's clear that Strawberry isn't just about generating answers to standard queries. I really think the real ambition here is far more proactive. OpenAI wants its AI to be able to independently navigate the web and conduct what they call deep research, effectively and reliably. Those of you familiar with the AI sector may remember discussions about the challenges of creating truly autonomous AI agents. Leading voices in the industry like Dario Amade from Anthropic have often highlighted two major hurdles, a lack of skill and a lack of reliability. Basically, folks, the real challenge is to precisely manage every single step of a process that involves an AI action. For example, if we tell an AI to oh, find a nice place where I can go to eat, the action of finding the restaurant will consist of at least four or five steps in total. These include checking emails and messages to figure out what my preferences might be regarding restaurants, using GPS to estimate the distance, the action of contacting the restaurant and making reservations, etc. So folks, you can see that each of these many actions needs to be absolutely precise and efficient to achieve the final result of recommending a restaurant. So, essentially, if our models aren't truly capable and reliable, they won't be able to perform consistently over a long period, which is necessary for an AI agent to operate autonomously. 
So when you ask a model to produce, you know, to to complete a sequence of action, let's say it's like three things in, you know, to, to basically, let's say to book, you know, a restaurant that you and I can go to on a certain day. Yep. The first action would be check the availability in both of our calendars. So that's a correct function call. Reconcile the correct moment. So that's the second action. Make sure that it's a restaurant that has availability. So that check is another one. And then, you know, go and sign in so that you can basically, you know, use the correct tool to book the right restaurant at the right time, put your credit card details down. Um, having obviously also checked that it's a restaurant that we both like, et cetera. So there's like four or five or six different steps of, of you know, just to produce that one quote unquote action subcomponents, right? In order to get that right, you're basically saying that the model has to produce perfect function calling for each element and do so in sequence. So it can't just be arbitrary, it has to be in sequence. And that's like saying it has to write a four page document in response to one question that is exactly that document and it can't be something that is approximate or similar to that document so we, we all think that obviously these models are magic at the moment and they write beautiful poetry and creative yeah. copy and text and give you good answers and sometimes they're grounded and blah 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 but when he when for each one of those answers there's a wide range of correct answers that it could have picked right Tens, hundreds, thousands, maybe. Now, the exciting thing about Project Strawberry is that it might be a major breakthrough because it allows AI to independently explore and research the internet accurately and reliably. You know, folks, this could really change the game. I mean, if the reasoning capabilities of Strawberry models improve significantly, it could speed up the development of AI agents, maybe even before we see versions like GPT-6. An OpenAI spokesman emphasized their ongoing effort to enhance AI, saying, we want our AI models to see and understand the world more like we do. Continuous research into AI capabilities is common practice in the industry, with a shared belief that these systems will improve in reasoning over time. Interestingly, they didn't specifically mention Strawberry, which I guess adds a bit of mystery to its potential. I mean, folks, the need for better reasoning is clear. Currently, AI systems often struggle to fully understand user instructions, requiring very specific prompts. For this, OpenAI's main goal is to enhance these reasoning skills to better meet human expectations. Sam Altman has pointed out that although these models like GPT-4 can reason, their ability to do so is limited and often unreliable. Basically, he said that GPT-4 is a dumb model. But in a meaningful conversation with Bill Gates, Altman emphasizes that improving the reliability of reasoning is essential. After all, we want the best possible answer every time, not just occasionally. So I think this focus on reliability could greatly improve how AI models interact with and understand the world around them. Anyway, folks, according to AI researchers interviewed by Reuters, effective reasoning in AI involves creating a model that can plan ahead, understand the physical world, and solve complex multi-step problems reliably. So this focus on reasoning is central to OpenAI's goals, as it's seen as the key to making AI models more versatile and effective. Additionally, folks, and this is pretty cool, there's speculation about a new model release, as Sam Altman discussed on the Lex Friedman podcast. Now, while new models don't always mean a new version like GPT-5, models like GPT-4 have already exceeded expectations in surprising ways. For instance, GPT-4's ability to handle tasks like 3D modeling and generating photorealistic images shows its impressive multimodal capabilities, which was a big leap from what was initially expected, as you may remember. Moreover, recent hints from OpenAI suggest they're close to launching technology with significantly enhanced reasoning abilities. You know, I think this could indicate an independent reasoning model, though it's not explicitly confirmed as GPT-5. I mean, if it were GPT-5, OpenAI would likely have stated it clearly. Regardless, it's clear that a new model with advanced reasoning is on the horizon, and it will be fascinating to see how OpenAI rolls out these updates. Now, folks, let's see how Strawberry really works. Basically, it uses a process called post-training to refine its capabilities. After the initial training on large data sets, the model undergoes fine-tuning to improve its performance in specific areas. 
This phase involves human feedback, where the model is adjusted based on its responses and examples of correct and incorrect answers. This iterative process helps sharpen the model's abilities, ensuring it performs more accurately and reliably in its designated tasks. So, if you're curious about how post-training works in AI folks, here's the rundown. During the initial phase, known as pre-training, the AI absorbs a vast array of general language skills from extensive texts, akin to a student learning the basics of reading and writing. Following this, the AI enters the post-training or fine-tuning stage, where it practices specific tasks like answering questions, summarizing articles, or translating languages. Think of it as specialized tutoring for the AI on particular subjects. And this is crucial, folks, because it sharpens the AI's skills in specific areas and it enhances its performance on tailored tasks. Now, folks, do you remember when we first talked about QSTAR? Well, get this. I think Strawberry draws parallels to a 2022 Stanford development method called Self-Taught Reasoner, or STAR. This method allows AI models to elevate their intelligence by iteratively creating their own training data. And I think it could be the STAR in QSTAR. According to Stanford professor Noah Goodman, STAR could potentially enable language models to surpass human-level intelligence. Essentially, this involves a form of self-improvement where the AI continuously generates and refines its own training data to better reason with the world. The STAR method involves what's termed bootstrapping reasoning with reasoning. So basically, by generating step-by-step -step rationales, it improves performance on complex reasoning tasks like math or common sense questions. The process begins with a small set of rational examples, which the model uses to generate answers. Incorrect answers are revisited with correct rationale to refine the model further. So this cycle of feedback and adjustment allows STAR to perform at levels comparable to significantly larger models. In short, this breakthrough could potentially usher in superintelligence, moving beyond human intelligence levels. Let me know what you think about that too, folks. I'm genuinely curious. Anyway, another impressive thing is how STAR, initially applied to a smaller model like GPT-J we're seeing now, achieves performance levels compared to much larger models like GPT-3 through iterative refinement and fine-tuning. You know, this could suggest scalability and potential application to even more advanced models like GPT-4 or GPT-5. Now, I want to talk to you about the intrigue around the name Strawberry. My feeling is, I think it could point to the strawberry issue that many AIs face. So the name might originate from this common reasoning error observed in language models, which basically consists of AIs not being able to count how many R's are in the word strawberry. Or it could be inspired by speculative scenarios, like those described by Elon Musk, in which Elon tells of an AI that is tasked with picking strawberries from a strawberry field, but not quite understanding the dynamics of the real world, the AI ends up making the whole world a field of strawberries to pick. Anyway, folks, I think the development around QSTAR, now possibly just referred to as STAR, due to its self-teaching reasoning capabilities, could showcase OpenAI's commitment to bring us the real next evolution of AI. This potential combines various methodologies like Q-learning, A-STAR research algorithms, and self-taught reasoning to create a robust, capable AI system. But I'd like to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all of this, whether you think we are going in the right direction or maybe we are rushing things a little bit too much. As always, see you in the next one, folks. You all take care.